Hey, this is Chuck Marshall with Madawani, and I'm talking to Michael Wilton from Queensryche. Michael, how you doing, man? I'm doing very good. It's uh, a uh, Friday, <laughs> and uh, first show of the year. Yeah, that's super exciting, man. Um, I, I, I just want to tell you, it's an honor to talk with you, because uh, I was thinking of, you know, when they told me I was going to interview you, I was, I was stoked, because I, it brought back memories of me going to the record store years ago, um, finding that first Queensryche EP and listening to that and just, you know, have my world blown away. So it's it's an honor to talk with you, man. Oh, thank you very much, yes. And uh, those were the glory days, obviously, <laughs> when records were selling. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, uh, so the new album, The Verdict, is coming out on March 1st. Um, I had a chance to listen to it. Uh, I think it's fantastic, like really powerful songs, excellent performance by you guys, and the mix is, you know, spot on. Um, I think it really is a great album like after the last couple um and i think it fares well against like those early albums like the warning or even the first ep and i was curious what do you think about uh how this album stacks up to the the last couple albums and then even going way back into the catalog like the warning or something like that well i view it just as a natural evolution of the band and i think uh you know this is perfect as far as uh, what we're striving for to continue on as queens right so it's uh um i think uh you know from my perspective it's all the, the touring that we've done you know and it just kind of infiltrated into the writing process and and uh um i'm really happy with this album but uh yeah i just think it's uh, a natural evolution everybody in the band is more comfortable they've been c consumed by this uh, monster machine called queens and right and just uh it's really uh you know, at a great point in its career right now. Awesome. Uh, I love the pacing on the on the new album. I think it's great. Um, I like that you guys have uh, kind of reinvigorated that edge uh, to the Queensryche sound in the last couple albums, and especially this this one. Um, maybe just like a little bit more metal sounding. Um, I was wondering, was is it a conscious decision um, when you guys were evolving to get a little less prog rock and a little bit more metal? Um, I think it's actually an unconscious decision. <laughs> I, think, I think it really just, you know, three and a half years touring on Conditioned Human and just seeing the energy, you know, that our live shows produce, it's it kind of, uh, you know, is invigorating and it gets us, you know, I think it creeps into the writing style uh, in a sense and, you know, it's... Yeah. It's that kind of, you know, day and age, you know, it's like you got to hit people in the face now or else right. you know, they, they go on to the next thing. So. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just kind of a, the way it, the way it worked. And, you know, this was definitely a, a different way of writing a Queensryche record than the past two. And, and uh, we're really happy with the outcome. Yeah, you and uh, Parker have some great guitar solos on the new album and those kind of trademark harmonies. Um, I really love the the harmonized solo on Light Years. Um, so I was kind of wondering what what was the process like for you guys when you're developing the songs this time around and figuring out who's going to play what. Um, <clears throat> excuse me there. Um, yeah, it's basically it was uh, one song at a time. Uh, the the writing process for the verdict was quite different than the other two albums. This one, um, the the demos weren't uh, you know 100 percent written. Uh -huh. So we uh, built the songs, you know, from the ground up, basically, and uh, Frankenstein them until we got <laughs> them uh, in a working environment, that, you know, that we can build the songs. And that goes, you know, for every instrument, you know, and especially drums. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a, a matter of uh, everybody being on their A-game, you know, spontaneous creativity, a lot of spontaneity in this album. A lot of uh, parts that were just written on the spot, wow. and um, you know, yes. being in a band with that kind of chemistry, it's it's kind of uh, exciting and it's fun. You know, it's yeah. just to see what transpires. So, um, you know, and, and that being said, you know, every song was very thought out in the writing process, and you know, everybody was involved in every song in every aspect, and. You know, obviously it was a lot of pressure, a lot of hard work, but right. very gratifying when we came down. We we basically uh, came down from 20 uh, song ideas down to uh, 10. And, wow. uh, you know, these are the, this was the best flow. This was the best uh, 
uh, energy and diversity and everything for the album. You know, we're just super pleased with it. Awesome. Um, I really, uh, there's another song on the album that I think is really cool that that Middle Eastern vibe that uh, Inside Out has. Um, and then it gets to the guitar solo and it feels like the mood totally shifts, you know, away from that minor feel. Uh, it's almost like a song within a song. Um, is there any kind of insight you can share on on that particular tune, like what you guys were doing and how that kind of came together? Sure. Um, insight Out is, is uh, you know, very special to me. I've been sitting on that guitar riff for probably 15 years. <laughs> and because of its, uh, you know, Phrygian or uh, Middle Eastern flavor, you know, it doesn't yeah. always fit into a Queensryche album. This is the first album that it's fit in, so it's it's got its uh, day um, now, and, and I'm super happy that, you know, this riff has made it onto this record. But yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously a very dark minor kind of a passage, and, and uh um, the middle section, obviously, we wanted to make uh, a big statement, big guitar solo, you know, the whole thing. Right. Uh, you know, and it's, and it's the, the song title, it's, you know, about searching within yourself and coming back out and, uh, you know, maintaining who you are and, and uh, continue on the, your journey. You know, it's just a um, an interesting uh, Queensryche uh, song. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it really did capture the the kind of essence of the song. And I, and again, that solo inside the song just sounds like another song all together. But they really blend in well. Yeah, and it's you know a lot of that is is uh, you'll find you know in our songwriting is uh, twists and turns. You know where you you'd expect something and may not go there. You know, and right? So, uh, we're always trying to challenge the uh, traditional and. Uh, you know, that makes it interesting for us and a little right. proggy for you. So, you <laughs> awesome. Uh, on this album, you had uh, Todd doing double duty with, with uh, vocals and drums. And I know that Todd had been, uh, has been playing drums for a number of years before he became, you know, a singer and the front man. Um, but I was wondering for you guys, if he, since he was doing the drums, did you guys have to change your approach to how you played or how you were thinking about playing? Um, no, not at all. Um, you know, when, when you're in a pressure situation, you know, you have deadlines with a record company, um, you know, you have certain slots that are available with your producer, you know, it's, it's, you just, you can't delay things anymore. Right. And, uh, when it got to the point when Scott couldn't do the album, you know, we had two choices, you know, we had yeah. to either get an outside drummer or, or use Todd. And, you know, Zeus said, well, we get an outside drummer, it's going to delay this project probably another three months, and I've got other commitments, you know, so that's not going to work. Let's get Todd in here and let's see what he can do. Uh-huh. So, we, you know, hooked up a MIDI drum kit to the sessions and, and went song by song. Zeus gave the thumbs up, you know, and it was yeah. all done in respect of the Queen's right drumming style. Right. And, uh, you know, when, when I played uh, the demos to the record company, they didn't even know. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, because yeah, I, you know, when I found out that Todd did the drumming, I was thinking about it and listening, went, went back and listened to some of the older albums. You really can't tell. The only thing I could notice on this new album is maybe uh, a more natural bass sound, you know, the, the kick. Um, mm-hmm. it's, instead of that kind of clicky um, snap that it was on the last album. Um, but the snare pop, everything sounded like, you know, it, you would know really that Todd was playing. Sure. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, you know, we're careful and, and then obviously, you know, scrutinizing to make sure, you know, we're not getting outside the boundaries of, of drumming. Yep. Um, you know, and it's just play for the song and, you know, respect the song and that's the way we do it. Right. So I know this has probably, you know, been beat to death with you guys, um, but with the album just about c- to come out, um, does the band hold any hope that Scott will be back? Um, you know, but I, I've been saying this for the last two years that you know we don't know you know it's yeah. just, we respect his privacy he's doing his thing um you know he yeah. told us he didn't want a tour so it's uh right um he's he's you know recently had a a, a child had paternity leave and left and you know he's down that path and we just give him his space and and uh, the door is always open if you know if he wants to 
make a comeback, that's fine. But you right. know, it's like you got to respect his privacy and what he's doing. You know. Yeah, yeah, and I, that's what I was kind of wondering is if you guys were still, you know, basically keeping the door open, or if you were just like, um, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make another move. Yeah, I mean, you know, look at it as a as a as a team. You know, we're if somebody wants to go out for a while and, and go do something else, someone picks up the, the pieces, you know, and, and, and keep the machine going. Right. It's like a sports team, you know, somebody <laughs> gets, gets a, a broken leg or a sore arm, you know, right. they don't fold, they get somebody to replace them, you know, and, and it's, it's still that team, right? So, yeah. Um, you know, so support the team, support the band, you know, right. it's, it's, we're, we're uh, recording the music, you know, you got the DNA of Queen Drake in there, and, and it's going to, to some people, it's going to sound like old Queen Drake because you got the old guys in the band that are in the band. So, right. Um, it's only natural that it's going to sound that way. Yeah. But, you know, we're trying to be more, you know, now. We're trying to move forward. We're trying to be, uh, you know, relevant in this, you know, genre that we're in. And um, so it's, it's not like we're treading on the past. Uh, so... In that sense, you know, it's hopefully this is a little more current and, and you know, and has that uh, kind of a, a, a edge, I guess, you know, that uh, a lot of metal and progressive fans are looking for. Yeah, I would say that the verdict is, you know, right up there, top of your catalog right now for me. Because um, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I really love the early stuff. I was not so much of a Operation Mind Crime fan. And then when you guys came back with Creams where I can human condition and then now this this i mean i'm really happy about it so but that's just me <laughs> and that's what's cool you know you get pockets of fans that are you know die hard uh you know for this decade or for this run of albums and that's cool you know that's like that's the way they want it and that's the way they think it that's fine you know but right. we're doing fine queens rights touring all over the world we have a great fan base and and we're having a great time uh uh uh, being Queen Trek. Awesome. And I know that you guys are, um, like, today's first day of tour, you're out, you're out with Fate's Warning uh, across the United States? Uh, yeah, yeah. Tonight, um, we're, we're by ourselves okay. up in uh, Verona, New York, and then we go down to Miami, and we get on the Monsters of Rock cruise. Um, we're on that for six days and, and do two performances. Then we uh, get dropped off, and then we start to tour with Fate's Warning. Awesome. So, but we're we're really excited about that. It's going to be a cool package. We've toured with uh, uh, Fate's Warning in the past, and they're great guys. And it's a, it's a, the, the the different music complements each other. It's going to be a great uh, show to for the fans to see. Yeah, I, I was thinking that was a it's a it's a great combo. And then you, later in the summer, you guys are heading out to Europe doing some really cool festivals. Um, I was curious, are there any like new ports of call that you are really looking forward to checking out? Well. You know, right now it's, you know, we're, we're looking at establishing, you know, South America. We haven't been there in a while. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a possibility that we might be going down to South America. So that's something, uh, you know, that's kind of on our list uh, uh, to, to rebuild that relationship. So hopefully we get down there this year. But yeah, we, we uh, are going to Europe in the, in the summer and the fall. I think there's another tour. Um, and then I think they're booking shows in January and, and February of next year. So it's, uh, we're, we're pretty much, uh, we, we have all our booking agents, you know, yeah. uh, uh, just, you know, firing away <laughs> yeah, around the world. It's, uh, can they go there? Can they go there? Can they go there? Yeah. That's cool. So. That's really cool. Um, so, uh, the uh, I saw an interview. Well, I didn't see it. I read it um, uh, with Doyle um, talking about uh, the meet and greets and how he's not really that much of a fan of them, and um, that he feels like he has to do it to make a living. I was wondering, what are your thoughts about um, Queensrÿche doing meet and greets? Is that something you guys feel is like a necessary evil, um, or is it something you actually enjoy? Um, no, I mean we enjoy that. I mean, obviously, it's. Um, you need, you know, we need some time before we perform, you know, so it's, we keep them small and, and you know, time-based. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, I mean, we, we still do them uh, occasionally and, and uh, um, you know, we have no problems with it. Cool. But as far as the big giant ones, you know, we don't, we don't do those anymore. 
are. Right. So I just got um, one other uh, question for you, and that is, uh, what is your favorite breakfast food? Wow. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I start the day with uh, like a quad espresso. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's uh, some toast. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Caffeine shot uh, and some... And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, I've never been asked that question. That's <laughs> kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know some people, you know, because I know your time schedules tend to be, you know, you're you're up later because you're out um, playing shows at night. And so, you know, sometimes people are saying, hell, I don't even eat breakfast. But then some people are like, oh, yeah, I love this and this. So, yeah, I just find it fun. <laughs> nice. All right, man. So, Michael, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you for the support. Check us out on tour. Um, go to queensrike.com, get all your info on the band, and uh, um, we'll see you out on the road.